Now we're talking. Left me a nice empty bottle of water. <laughs> We've got a pre-drunk <laughs> bottle of water. Somebody sampled it to make sure that it wasn't poisoned. In someone's bladder. I want it back. No, I'm kidding. I can help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> Steve and I just became very close. Um, so uh, I, do we, I don't think we need fancy introductions. I'm just going to go down the line. My name is Sean Schimmel. Um, I, I'm best known as the voice of Goku for the last 18 years. And I do a bunch of other stuff. And I'm here first time in Lexington having a great time. Everyone's been amazing. I am personally thrilled to be here. Oh, wow, you can have this old one. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, and, uh, and, and to my left, thank you. Yeah, and he's going to go zip. Um, uh, this is my buddy, Zach. He's on Steven Universe. He's hey amazing. I love his show. I'm, I'm Zach Callison. I'm on Steven Universe, and Amazon's just had magic, and a few other things, but most of you guys, I think, are Steven Universe fans. <laughs> <laughs> he has an actual jewel in his belly button, if you, if you look. No. Yeah, I had it surgically put in to help motivate me for the character. <laughs> it's a really tough life decision, but I think it was worth it in the end. Well, I'm new at this. My name is Barbara Goodson. I just started in voiceover um, uh. about... Uh, 200, uh, 10,000 years ago. Uh, I'm the voice of Rita! <laughs> yes. Mother Tals and a couple of others. Couple? Come on. And a couple of others. Come on. Granny Chio, Na, Nauta. Yes. Oh, Keep gosh. Oh, uh, Fraggle, Red Fraggle. Yeah. Oh. I, I love I Fraggles, I man. I'm a, I'm a big Fraggle fan. That's right. The, a long time ago. When, when was that? When that was? Uh, oh, that was in the '80s. I did Zero, which was Goku before he was Goku. For, for it was for the which dub? Dragon it was, Ball. Uh, yeah, it was Dragon Ball, but I think the Zero character was with a Harmony Gold dub, or yes, was that it was yes. Harmony Gold dub? I have not heard that, although I've heard of it throughout my career many yeah, times. Yeah. But yeah, that's fast. And Steve was also played Goku in Final Bout uh, on the PlayStation One. Really badly. When though. I was just a fan of Steve's and not even a voice actor. <laughs> Yeah, I was and Barbara's, and I didn't know I was a fan of hers, and Zach wasn't born yet. I was about to say, how many years ago was this? <laughs> I'm fans of lots of voice actors whose names I don't know. Then I meet them on the circuit. I'm like, oh, my God, I love your work. I didn't even know. You know so. That happens to me all the time. I love it. That's the best thing about conventions. We never get to see each other in town. That's true. We don't. And right. so we have to come here just to hang out. So we catch that's, up. That's... Most voice actors catch up at conventions. We don't see yeah. each other in L.A. We're too busy yeah. doing stuff, you know? Yeah. It's... So many of us work from home on a lot of our gigs that... You know, it's it becomes very isolated. Not a lot of ensemble. Spend workers. a lot of time in your underwear working at home, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. recording. Well, I work in the studio in my underwear too. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. They let yeah. you do that now. They won't yeah. let me do that. I asked. I have your face on my underoos. <laughs> 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 uh, this is funny. At a, at a con, I think it was this last year. Uh, I was sitting next to you, or a couple right. of stalls down from you, and somebody came up with that real bout. Goku oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. thing, and I, I looked at it and I said, you know, that's the real Goku right down Well, there. that's very but, nice of you, but you're in that. That's you, I know, though. But, you know, I, I didn't even remember doing that. <laughs> it was so long ago, and, I, and somebody uh, sent me a link to it, to, to my performance in that, and I sucked. I was so bad. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I find that thought, hard to believe. You know what? I'm just going to pass all of this back to the real Goku. Oh, that's, where, that's where it belongs. Yeah, you'll always kind. be my thank Goku, you. dude. Oh, thank you. Uh, I was laughing man in Ghost in the Shell, so I had probably two lines. The Prime Minister, I don't know if she was in the movie, you know, the movie's coming out uh, yes. next week, right? Yes, next week. I have nothing to do with that, though. I have nothing to do with yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> you have anything to do with the exploding gorilla? Or, no, that was the King Kong movie. Then They had the, <laughs> the premiere, the, the blow-up King Kong caught on fire, like in, in Vietnam? Or no, it was in Manila? I can't remember what country it was in. It was... In in real, yeah, the, the premiere, the world premiere of the King Kong movie or whatever, the, there's a video of it on YouTube, caught on fire. And I'm like, that's a premiere. As long as nobody got hurt. I hope nobody got killed. I don't know if anyone got hurt, actually. So I don't want to make a joke if several people are died. I would have, have loved dead. to do the voice of the burning Kong, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, put me out. Put me out. <laughs> that's actually the plan for the closing ceremonies for this here convention. What's they're, that? Uh, they're setting a giant gorilla on fire for this convention closing are ceremonies. They? Yeah. Are Cold you suiting up for that? 
What's that? Are you suiting up for that? Yeah, it's fireproof yeah. and everything. I've been training for this for weeks. <laughs> you have a party weeks. in the desert with a burning gorilla. Um, <laughs> that sounds like a new festival. That's exactly, that. burning gorilla, burning Kong, burning Kong, 2018, 2000. Well, 17 now, but the next year it'll be yeah. Okay, the we're burning stepping back on the evolutionary ladder. <laughs> Right. We never really talk to each other. We just riff when we, we hang do. Out. We, we don't should... really. I don't even ask how Steve is. I just like we just riffing. Okay, I know no. nobody cares anyway. <laughs> do, you, do you guys have questions? Yeah. Really? Sorry. Do we have a system for this? We don't. Well, unless, unless uh, oh, I forgot the gentleman's name was going to moderate it. But usually we Man, just no. let Man, somebody on the panel randomly point, and when I do it, I just try to mix it up enough to where everybody roughly gets a chance. Right here. Yes. Rita Repulsa. <laughs> I made him say that. If I did that, I'd have a hernia or hemorrhoids or something. I, I do have a hernia. Oh. <laughs> How do you choose one character? Oh, it's God. so hard, man. It really Actually, uh, there's something on uh, Netflix right now called Vodder Snikes and Gumbles. And I'm doing weather snake. They eat. They the the the, the butter snakes eat a mass, mattress stuffing. <laughs> mattress stuffing. Oh. Anyway. You're voicing a mattress stuffing? No, I oh. eat mattress. Stuffing. Oh, okay. I thought you were but voicing. She's, oh, she's a little <laughs> I, li I like her. That's hilarious. I um. I a warm up exercise. Really was excited to. It was more the nature of the project. The role was was small, but I did a role in The Wind Rises, the Studio Ghibli movie. Um, I played the young protagonist at the beginning of the movie, and it was supposed to be Hayao Miyazaki's final film at the moment, but he came out of retirement for the 21st time. So, um, <laughs> But just just being a part of, of one of his projects was like a, a huge goal. I didn't get to meet him or anything, uh, being on the dub, but it was still really, really cool. That's cool, man. Lucky. I did not know that. Lucky. <laughs> I don't know if I have one. I... I mean, everybody says, Goku this, and I'm like, yeah, that's a character that is my favorite to play only in the sense that how much, you know, love it generates and what a character it is, but as far as being an actor and wanting to live in a soul of something that evolves, Goku tends to stay in beginner's mind <laughs> all the time. So I feel like I'm trapped in a time bubble stasis acting-wise, um, but I do love the character. It's just not, uh, performing it makes me feel like I'm on crack all the time, because I have to talk like this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I just feel like I'm going to pop. So, um, but I do love playing. And there's some moments in Dragon Ball that just top everything. But as far as uh, uh, different characters, I enjoyed playing Batman in the Dark Knight Rises uh, iPad because I'm a huge Batman fan. Um, I really enjoyed playing this character, uh, uh, just a guest par part on Scooby-Doo, only because I was in the same room with Frank Welker, which made mm. me ball my eyes out. Yep. So I was just like, I couldn't believe I was there. I was like, what happened to me? Um, Next time I cry is if I remember in the room with Steve Bloom, and uh, then, then I'll be crying. <laughs> but for different reasons. For different reasons. i got to work with that asshole. No, I'm kidding. Exact opposite. Um, so I can't really, I, you know, there's so, there's so many. Uh, the, on, so on Sakamaro and Ninja Nonsense was a lot of fun. For those of you who are real hardcore anime fans and you know about the little perverted yellow ball, it was a pretty fun character to play. So that's that's my answer. Any more questions? Yeah, yeah pick picking a single character. Oh, I thought you did it. Sorry. No, I don't do team. anything. I haven't done anything. I'm sitting here. <laughs> um, uh, I thought you said, I'm sorry. <laughs> picking a favorite character, I think, is really hard when you've been doing this as long as some of us have. Um, <laughs> just because, I, it, at least from my experience, they sort of become part of my personality, and my personality becomes part of them. They, they're intertwined. And if you choose one, the rest of them fight in my head, and I feel like it's going to explode in a red mist. So um, my, my typical answer for that question is whatever I'm working on Monday morning is my favorite because it means <laughs> I'm still employed in this business. <laughs> so, okay. How about I'll let Steve pick. Sean, yeah. When it comes to Dragon Ball and Goku, did you ever try to do the voice for kids out there? They, would they talk to me about that because uh, the idea was uh, Stephanie and Adolni originally voiced that and normally we would voice... It's very often that women voice little boy characters. Uh, it sounds more correct and it works better. Um, they had this idea that since Goku gets reincarnated uh, as a little boy again, that I would voice his thoughts because he would still be a 45-year-old man that was shrunken down or however old Goku was at the time, which I thought was a good idea, but my producer at the time was kind of an idiot. And so, no, that's a dumb <laughs> idea. Nobody's going to get that. I'm like, no, it makes perfect sense if you read the story. So, you know, I, I was disappointed that I wasn't uh, working on that. And I've never tried to voice the character like Stephanie has done. 
Um, so yeah, it just, you know, no, I haven't, but I wish I had. <laughs> Is Michael Rooker back there? <laughs> <laughs> If he is, he'll start messing with us because that guy will mess with you. He is so I know. funny. I know. He's a trip. He's awesome. There's just a gentleman here at the display. Yes? Do it. No, I'm kidding. Oh, bad life choice. It's good to be a bad guy. No, I, I thought that was amazing. That whole arc was incredible. Uh, I might have back then. I, yeah, I, I had some bad habits back then. Could have been, yeah, could have been. I don't, I don't remember much from that time in my life. <laughs> no, 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 no. I wasn't, I wasn't smoking cigarettes at that time. Um, <laughs> no, it's funny that you mentioned Yamaki because most people... Talk about Gilman and other characters. That, that, that's a name I've not heard in a long, long time. So, thank you. Wait, Steve, are you the guy? Wait, are you the guy? Hang on, I might be a fan of Steve's voice before you pick the next person. Wait, are you the guy in Diablo who goes? <laughs> the guy was a, he's one of them crypt guys or the, in the Diablo. He's got this great cackly I'm the, laugh. I'm the head in the bag. I'm that guy. Yes, yeah. yes. That I'm a fan Sultan of that. Sultan Cool. Yes. Awesome. And he's got nice. that crazy laugh. Yeah. Yes, Sultan Cool. Oh, yeah. yes. yes. Sorry, I didn't realize this that. This gentleman right here. Sorry. As long as he's alive. <laughs> Stan Lee <laughs> keeps saying he's done with these things. Stan's really old and he's kind of done with these things. Look, I could die at any yeah. second. No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he'll come here anymore. <laughs> I think he said he's done. Is he? Yeah. I know he's got a farewell good one going on at New York yeah. Comic Con, a farewell appearance. Tomorrow's headline is Sean Schemmel jinxes Stan's <laughs> life. <laughs> that everyone hates me. <laughs> I love Stan Lee. Tom Kenny? Oh, Tom Kenny might do it. He might yeah. do it. Yeah. 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 He's a champ. Yeah, we'll ask him. Yeah. I'll see him on Tuesday. I'll ask him. Okay, I'll tell him that you said so. What's your name? Caden? Keenan. Keenan, okay. I'll tell him Keenan says so. And I'm going to ask him on Wednesday. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and then he's, Zach's going to ask him on. No, I'm teasing. I'm serious. I'm going to write this down and I'm going to tell him Keenan said so. Absolutely. Man in the hat. Uh, uh, I got a question for Brady. Yes. Uh, I was wondering if you could say a Bill Brady uh, big thanks to Lenore since she's now a seal back there. <laughs> really? And you have to say shik <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's actually snicked, exactly. I only got to say that once in, well, in one character as uh, the sort of chibi version of Wolverine in, what was that? Superhero Squad. I actually said snicked. That's really weird. So, so now I'm dissing Origins? Wow. And, and what was the line you want? <laughs> hey, X-Men Origins, this is how I feel about you, bub. Snicked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> this is just how I exist normally. <laughs> That's really good because that was like a different voice from your natural speaking voice. How did you do that? Oh. <laughs> Man, I've never. Wait a second, Steve. I just realized what you're doing. We're obviously older than Zach. You're doing voice actor hazing to the new guy. This right. is. We, we don't, I didn't know we had this. Wait, this is a new thing. That means I get to give you shit, Zach. I have not hazed you yet. You're the new guy. Does this mean I get to join the voice actor fraternity? That's right. We have to do something regarding involving your underwear or something pulled up or straight. I don't know. What do they do? I don't know anything about hazing. It's the voice actor spanking machine. Yes. yes. <laughs> How do you think we get all those crazy fighting noises and pain, pain out? We're just going to record them. <laughs> yeah, there we go. His dad is making a hit list right now. Because I kept wondering, I'm like, this is the third Steve Jeff. Steve is the first Steve's one to go. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize you were hazing him. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've, well, I've actually known Peter for years. Uh, he used to work on Toonami back in the old days. Uh, he was one of the announcers for Toonami, so I'd see him passing in the hall, and I would kind of look at him and go, hi, hi, hi I'm, doing, I'm doing Tom, and he was always very sweet. But I actually got to work with him on Transformers Prime, and uh, we worked together every week for a couple of years. 
So I got to know him really well. He and Frank Welker were Optimus and Megatron. And uh, we became really good friends. So on Rescue Bots, I think he only came into the studio once while we were recording that because he was busy doing other things. And he didn't want to put up with our shenanigans, I, I'm sure. Anyway, it's a really crazy cast. But yeah, he's one of the nicest guys in the world. And, and the interesting thing about Peter is that he's, he's this very well put together uh, gentleman. He has sort of the pencil mustache. He's always very nicely dressed. And he's not a huge man. He's a, he's a very normal sized human being. But he walks into the room and he just, he goes, <clears throat> okay, we're ready. And they, they give him the go ahead and he goes, roll out. And you just hear, it, it almost feels like the walls are flexing and all of your organs are vibrating inside and everybody in the room just breaks down crying and their little girl squee. It is the most, it's the most astonishing thing. He, vi he literally vibrates the whole room. It's almost as though his jaw unhinges and this beast comes out of him. But the, the most gentle, sweet, kind human. He's wonderful. I love him. Is somebody from over here? Yeah. How about you in the hat? You are. Well, like personally, or just don't like doing that voice. Oh, so you don't like the the the, the characters, morals, I guess, or something, or the character. Uh, I don't know, because I, I, usually when I hate voicing a character, it, it's because it's either particularly painful or an annoying voice that I don't like having to hear in my headphones all day, which would have been the announcer from F-Zero GP Legend, which I hate that voice. <laughs> and I also had to scream my ass off on Thumb Wrestling Federation where every single line was screamed and I could only record <laughs> one line at a time as a crazy Russian thumb. Um, <laughs> I screaming like this the whole time, except much louder. Um, so I hated doing that. But I, don't, I haven't met... A, I, there's not characters that I dislike so much. I mean, for me as an actor, I kind of got to be friends with the character if I'm going to live in the character, unless it's a self-hating character. But then I don't hate the character for the same reasons you might... I might he'd be hating himself for different reasons. So it's a kind of a weird weird mind game, I guess. You know? Does that make sense? I, I don't... You know what I mean? Yeah. I got I to gotta let the character live in me. So I got to be friends with it on some level. Um, even if I hate myself. <laughs> I don't know. As the character, if the character hates himself... Um, it's, it's not really a character, but promo work is, is very strange. Um, <laughs> if you guys have ever watched, like, you know, a network broadcast, like, coming up next on Blah 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 Network, um, that kind of stuff, it's, you're literally not playing a character. It's, it's very, like, one note, you have to do, like, a bunch of takes of, you know, just changing the sound, but there's no, like, motivation behind it. It's literally just commercial. So, like, after the 17th time of saying, like, Coming up next at six, the land before time, 12, 13, 14, 15, just all the way through for an hour in your closet. It's like, it's maddening sometimes. You don't ever, I used to have to do those for, uh, for kids. And uh, at some point, I'll tell you a story about how I actually lost my temper and cursed out my producer and left for the day because he was being <laughs> such a douche. But, um, which I do not recommend. That was completely unprofessional behavior, and I don't recommend it. However, I still relish it and enjoy it. Um, and I wrote a parody about him getting fired doing an impression of him and everyone at the office. I, I, I totally mocked him to death. But do you ever feel like when I was doing Sunday 8, 8, Thursday 8, 5, shove it up your ass. Like you're just shoving. At, here, watch our freaking show. And you just want to put a gun to your head. I have a I couple do. a couple recordings saved to my hard drive of me just like taking the promo scripts after I finish and just going through them and like swearing a bunch. And doing yes, a bunch of different yes, voices. you have to. And yes. I, I specifically label it like do not send this file. Come to the dark side. <laughs> but, but yeah, just a different voice for every line and it is, you know, blowing off steam. Yeah, more, m more so for me, it's like when you're doing a really sweet character, you <laughs> want to say things like, shove it up your ass. <laughs> you because it gets too saccharine, and you have to stick it where the sun don't shine. <laughs> Especially on panels in Lexington. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where we're not supposed to curse. Oh, we're not. Oh, wait, I forgot Probably about not. that. There are children in the room. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, it might not affect your head. They have to learn sometime. It's okay. It's Sorry. okay. The, the only character, uh, like you were saying, I, the, the nastier the character, the more interesting it is for me because True. I don't get to do that in real life. So I have to find some sort of redeeming value or purpose in that character for being that nasty. And it helps me, I think, to understand people who kind of go in that direction. And yeah, that, sure. That it is possible to make that switch if enough things go wrong in your life. 
Um, but the one character that I, I actually walked out on was in a show that they just called... Uh, wasn't hentai? No. I'm Because I did walk out of a hentai session. Yes. I couldn't do it. They just they called it Project X, and they told me that I was playing a creature. That's literally all they told me. Oh, so it was hentai. I was just joking. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. Oh. And I walked into the booth, and, and I'm known for doing creature work, so I go in there, and I'm doing this creature, and this this big, gnarly thing with tentacles. And I didn't think anything of it, and I had never seen a hentai before. And Oh, you were not just, a familiar with tentacle cotton, No, you and were so, not. Okay. so I went in there, and I'm just going, <laughs> doing this really disgusting creature. And all of a sudden, I see a little girl, and then you, if you know anything about it, that's all I'm going to say. But I, I literally looked at the producer, and I said, you know what? I'm going to give this back to you. And thank you very much. And then I, I've never done one since. So I, I just... I, I, same thing happened to me almost. Like almost Andy, the same thing. That's the only job I ever walked out on was a thing where, where little girls were... Things were getting bad. Yeah. And those you don't do, especially if you're yeah. a parent. Yeah. 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 No, it's... it's it was freaky. I, I, I ran out on background voices. I couldn't even actually... I didn't even record a note. Uh, Michael uh, was working on a project, and he's like, look, I just got to get this done. Can you just... I was working as a staff ADR director there, and he goes, can you just jump in the booth and do some background? And I didn't realize for myself, because I had not been voice acting a long time, but I'd been doing it five or six years, maybe longer. And I didn't realize how much I would commit to character, because it just feels like I'm doing my job, until I, he said, just do background moaning. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> fine. I'm a, I'll try some background moaning. And so, you know, there's ADR beeps that occur. They get you ready, you know, beep, 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 you start talking. And so I didn't realize that as I hear beeps, there's a shift that occurs in my head where I'm slipping right back into the, where I need to be. And I didn't realize it. And so it was like beep, beep. And I feel my, my, I guess my spirit shifting into the show where the background moaning. And I would beep, beep, ah! And I took him, I literally <laughs> threw my headphones off. And I said, sorry, man, I can't do this. Uh, I'm going to go. <laughs> And I had never recorded a lick of hentai. Um, and I'm not judging it for those of you who like it. It's just to perform it is a very freaky thing. You know, for those of you who like it, I'm not going to morally judge anybody here. But um, I don't watch it myself, though. <laughs> I'll say that. Okay. Should we get somebody? Oh, how randomly about, picking. All the way in the back there. Script has a lot to do with oh, it. Oh, writers. I love writers. Writers and directors, too. <laughs> yeah. And whatever the director lets you get away with or, or uh, you know, encourages in the booth, I think, is, is really, really helpful. It can change your performance completely. But I bet you've run into this, Steve. If you, have, if you don't have a – and I'm guessing you have Barbara. You haven't yet, Zach. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I'm teasing. But you'll know what the I'm teasing about in a second. Begun. But I bet you've run into this situation where, you know uh, – you're, you've given a strong performance, you're making strong choices, and the director isn't strong enough himself. You're giving a strong choice that isn't the right choice, yeah. but it's so convincing, your director's new, and or maybe young or inexperienced or something, and they don't feel strong enough to go have their own vision and then argue with you and say, that's great, let's do this instead. Mm -hmm. I'll bet you've run into that a lot to where you hear your performance after the fact, and like, I wish that guy had directed me more. Absolutely. You know? but. It's a curse to be a, to make strong choices because you want to make strong choices all the time, and if you're good at it, you can fool less Jedi-minded directors into thinking you're you're doing the right choice, and 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 you're just trying to make strong choices. Well, and even beyond that, in the in the editorial process, sometimes you'll do three, four, five, ten different takes, and you know that one of those is really, really good, and it's not the one that they choose yeah. in post. And we have no control over that. We do what we do, and we have to let it go. So that that's very frustrating. Yeah, it's it's it is really frustrating sometimes when you know that there was a better one, and it. Mm -hmm. And it's not played. A yeah. lot of directors like, don't know how to talk to actors either. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to voice acting, Zach. Welcome. Hey, no. What makes me crazy is when I'm doing an accent and I know I'm not there. You know, I'm not on it. And they're saying, oh, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. yeah, that's irritating. Like, no, no, because I, I did this, um, uh, I don't know, a video game where I was Jamaican. And I was terrible. Dude, right. I want to hear it. <laughs> you know, it was. Like a mom. I mean, mom, mom. You don't, uh, you know, it was like it was Spanish, it was Hindu, it was everything. It wasn't Jamaican. Well, Digimon was a whole thing that should have been Jamaican, right? <laughs> Digimon. Yaman. <laughs> Yaman. Yeah. Digimon. Irimon. No, Hello, it's... I'm Irimon. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. the first time I ever thought about that. I think uh, spending a lot of time with a character will really... Um, help get into it as well. I found that with Steven, especially. Um, spending all these years playing him has really opened up a lot more, um, because, especially because the writers on our show develop him as a character. He doesn't stay in one place. He's he's aged along with me, and I 
I've grown up at the same time as him, so it was a very interesting um, sort of parallel for, for him specifically and other characters that I've done you know, multiple sessions for. It, it evolves over time. What a great show for that to be your breakout, too. Absolutely. It's such a brilliant show. and I'm super fortunate, man. I, yeah. I'm thankful for Rebecca every day. That's, <laughs> She's it's amazing. Brilliant. And you're, you're incredible on the show, by the way. Thank you. Thank you, man. You that that means, you. like, <laughs> three worlds coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting other people pick. People are looking at me. I don't want to pick. Oh, the, the lady with the braids and the whatever that is. Hair. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that I, well, that, wait, what? <laughs> that I have worked in. That I, oh. Paradox, Steven Universe. <laughs> I, okay, Clone Wars, um, Count Dooku. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Cowboy Bebop Julia, because she's my girlfriend. <laughs> I can't think of anything. I'm gonna let Zach go. Or did you already go? I, I already I already went, but my I, head's I can so far up my stand. ass. I I am, I'm still I'm what well, you understand when people ask me I have this bad habit when people I can't answer questions like that because all, immediately I'm like this weird I don't know computer my brain will go I'm going through the catalog and I'm thinking about every show and I'm thinking about all the characters I'm like going I'm like through the first part of the database trying to figure that out and weigh it all and while everyone's doing it real easily and then it gets to me and I still hadn't thought of anything. Um, yeah, because it'd be really easy to pick something like Vegeta or whatnot. I mean, I like that character just fine, but I, I mean, I like Gregory and Bubbles, but that's on Dragon Ball. I like pretty much anything Monica Rial does because she's amazing, um, <laughs> but I, I'm not in all the shows she's in. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't ever think in those. I, I don't know. It's so hard. I mean, I know that there are video game characters I play, like I'll bump into a Steve Bloom character I like, and I like what Crispin does in, in Diablo, but I'm not in Diablo. Um, I'm trying to, I, I don't I know. I'll answer later. It. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Man in the very back. That's on my brain. It's just. Uh, I don't see. Um, See, watching D. Bradley Baker play his face like a flute is pretty incredible. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. To make his creature noises, he like uses his hands like this and like puts applies pressure to certain chambers on his face to make different noises. It's I've never seen anyone else. I don't think anyone else does it. No. It's it's wild. To watch. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's made of Play-Doh, I think. <laughs> he's he's unbelievable, and it really does. And I've tried it. I've pushed on. I do a lot of creature voices too, and I've pushed on every orifice that he does, and it doesn't do anything for me really. I can't do the cricket. No, no. There's there's a few people that can do that, but yeah, no, no. That's that's just odd. I know D is not human. No. He's he's amazing. I can't think of anybody else that really has a. We probably don't see the ritual either because I think a lot of that probably takes place in the car on the way yeah, to the studio. Yeah. So I know that I'm making. I did. Like, I did go to a voiceover <laughs> session once. I didn't make fun of this guy because I don't even know who he is. But I remember going to a session and there's a guy in the parking lot and he was over by his car and he was he was going like. That's probably the engineer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't recognize him. It was in Texas, actually. It wasn't in LA, but I know, it was weird. I know some people. Do you? I mean, I, I notice people do the hand over the ear when they work it. You do the hand over the ear? Yeah. It's because I'm deaf. No, when, especially when I'm doing uh, really nuanced, quiet characters or deep voice characters, and I, I really can't hear it unless I do that. And if you put your hand behind your ear there, it actually amplifies what's coming out. So it's, it's the equivalent of wearing headphones, which is where I began in anime. A lot of us began in anime. Uh, I got used to being able to hear myself, and without doing that, I can't hear myself as effectively. Oh, the hands are somebody from the middle here. The middle, yeah. I thought... Uh, you right there. Yes. Uh, I want to know what that guy did to the voice acting. Was he like a house eating Cheetos? <laughs> Pretty much. Yes. I was eating Cheetos. <laughs> you were at the house with us. <clears throat> well, when I was a kid, um, 
I was fascinated with Rich Little and Bill Cosby and uh, later Robin Williams, Eddie Murphy, anybody who could do voice, but in particular guys who imper impersonators. That's why people don't realize who Rich Little was. That guy, if you ever get a chance to see him ro on a roast with uh, Jimmy Stewart, teaching Jimmy Stewart how to do a Jimmy Stewart impression, it is comic gold. And, he, and Jimmy Stewart's doing, and he's like, and you lean forward, and then you do it. And he's doing the whole, and Jimmy Stewart's playing along with him in perfect stride. But I think the reason I, I liked it is because I was watch Rich Little and he'd be doing impersonations of people I had never heard of because I, I was born in the late 60s and I was growing up in the 70s and I didn't know who Jack Benny was or all these old school 30s and 40s actors, but he would transform into them. He would do a Jack Benny who I'd never seen before. I'm like, I don't know who this Jack Benny guy is, but he just became him. Like he just literally would transform vocally. It really felt to me like a different spirit was entering his body. And I was like, he's a different, I want to do that. And so I would, I would listen to Bill Cosby records over and over you know, to wrestle my brother whom I slept with. Bill Cosby's a very funny fellow, right? Oh, he's doing the what, the cubits, and he's doing the thing, and he would tell the story. I learned so much about storytelling and how to, you know, do, create, and it would also teach me, I even learned stuff from like Michael Winslow who would just do sound effects, even though I can't do those sound effects. It was just people who showed me that you could do more things with your voice than just talk. Um, then I was constantly, from that I would turn the volume down on, on, on particularly black and white television shows and make up voices in real time all the time. I didn't know I was practicing my whole life. So then I went to music school and I was a French horn player in orchestras and stuff and my friend of mine was like, you should audition for this show, which was Dragon Ball Z, uh, which I didn't know what it was. And it, was, it wasn't announced as Dragon Ball Z, it was just said Nash wanted voice actors for a national cartoon. I said, nah, I don't want to do it, I'm a French horn player. But they're like, no, you should do it. You're good at voices. You do them all the time. You're doing parties. It's fun. You're doing it all the time. Now, granted, I didn't realize I was practicing the whole time to get that. And I'd taken a couple of acting classes in college, so I had some acting experience. And then I went in for the audition and got three parts, and I was like, I didn't even get it, and I didn't even know was what Goku was. And then, there, then I got in the booth the next day, and I was like, I've been, I feel like I came home. It was just really weird. It just it happened, and then I've been doing it ever since, and I'll keep doing it until they stop hiring me or I hate it. <laughs> One or the other. And... The way the industry's now, as you know, I'm starting to hate it. But no, I mean, not the act of acting or voice acting, but just we have our, our, our video game strike going on and stuff and other things that are kind of a problem for us as actors right now. And I, I don't want to darken the room, but that's my answer. Um, anyway, sorry, go ahead. Um, for me, I started as an on-camera actor. I, that's what I moved to Los Angeles for, and I, I still do that. But um, yeah, I, as a younger kid, all the, ro the roles I booked um, were what Charlie Adler refers to as Brady Boys. Just like normal kid voices. When I was, you know, 12, 13, I had like a cute little kid voice, so I would do cute little kid voices that sounded real. Um, and Steven Universe was really the first uh, thing I booked that was like a character. Because um, when I started, my voice hadn't changed that. It was deeper than my normal voice. So I was down here and, you know, playing a lot more. And it, it was, I loved the audition when I first recorded it with my teacher. Um, it was, it was so quirky. It was so weird. I'd never done anything like that before. And, um, that was five years ago that I sent that in for the pilot, and ever since then I started. That's what got me to play around with all the weird character voices, and I have. I, I still mostly audition and 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 do you know normal kid voices or younger kid voices, but I have those in my arsenal waiting, and I'm I'm honing them because I I love crazy character voices like these. He's waiting to release the Kraken. <laughs> it's on the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was a little girl. Um, it was a way to get my dad to laugh, and I liked to make him laugh. I would mimic him. And uh, watching TV with my f sisters and everything and seeing uh, Tom Terrific was a character, and I was able to mimic the boy voice just because it was easy. And, and, uh, but I was, I was an actress first. I was a theatrical, you know, I studied uh, acting. And this turned into uh, something that was going to be something different than waiting tables. Was the uh, co it was called Japanese dubbing at the time, and since I could do the boy voices, I got a lot of jobs doing that. And I also grew up watching Jonathan Winters, which was you know he was an incredible character actor and a comedian. And I got to work with him, and that was Robin Williams. Um, hero, and I got to work with Jonathan on stage with Nancy Cartwright, who was... Um, He's Bart amazing. Simps yeah, John yeah. Sorry, I'm just so blown away that you worked with Jonathan Winters. I did. So that's, I, I I'm a huge fan I of his. I improv with Jonathan that's Winters. Amazing. I played his mother. And, um, and because I was so enamored by him, I was a fan, he got the vibe of me being excited, and he said, hire that one. He liked me because I, I liked him, I think. But it was, it was mimicry. It was kind of like a way to uh, make people laugh. And I like to make people laugh. It makes people happier. Well, I was sitting on a couch eating Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> 
And this guy came up and said, would you like a million dollars to do a Japanimation program? And no, that's not how it happened at all. I was, I was uh, a starving musician in the 80s. I was playing in an R&B band, uh, the only R&B band in town. Called uh, Steve Bloom and the Blums? No. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been successful. I don't know. Uh, no, we were opening for heavy metal acts. The whole thing was just a mistake from beginning to end. But to support that habit, uh, I got a job in the mailroom at a low-budget film company. And I happened to have the deepest voice in the mailroom. And the head of the mailroom was casting for a Japanimation program called The Giver. And uh, he asked if I wanted to come in and audition on the weekend. He told me that he was going to give me free breakfast and free lunch. And that's literally all I needed to hear. I didn't care about anything else that he was saying. I was terrified about the prospect of even acting. I had never done it before. Uh, but I went into the booth. And because of my music training, I had a, a rhythmic sense, which language is very rhythmic. And I was able to match the lip flaps on screen. And so the first thing they had me do was the voice of a creature ripping the arm off of another creature and beating him with it or something. And so he goes, what would that sound like? And see if you can match the mouth. And I went, OK. <coughs> and they hired me on the spot. Wow, that's and I ended up doing 26 episodes on that show. And then the same company was doing a lot of production at the time. They just kept hiring me. And I was just doing this on the weekend for fun. It paid very little. And I ended up doing that for 10 or 15 years while I stayed at that film company, worked my way up to an executive position. I was head of marketing, had a really nice income, a corner office in Hollywood, and I hated going to work every day because the people were so mean to each other. And then finally I booked a 7-Eleven commercial and I thought, okay, I can get out now. And I quit my job and then I starved for like three years. <laughs> But eventually I got a good agent and I just stuck with it. But, but the thing that I tell a lot of new actors coming into the business is do it because you love it. Don't do it to get rich or famous because I, I still love it. I still love going to work every day and don't tell my agent, but I would still do it for nothing because it's, it's all I've ever really done. So. How does somebody from over there? Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, you with the yellow scarf there. Or yellow jacket or yeah, yellow, I, I can't quite yellow see it. hazard <laughs> outfit. No, I'm trying to. Um, definitely Peridot. <clears throat> Ew, clods! <laughs> we have like an unofficial running competition among the cast and crew of uh, Steven Universe to who can do the best Shelby Rivara Peridot impression. Um, yeah. Shelby is obviously ineligible. But it's, it's fun. Um, th some of them are really close. Dee Dee is really good at it. Michaela's really good at it because they can get up there in range. And then our director, um, Ken Osborne, who um, was one of the showrunners from Adventure Time, he does impressions of all the characters. Um, but they're n they don't sound like the characters at all. They're just his interpretations of them. So he does like a super cockney garnet. Like, Steven. Because <laughs> Estelle's never in the booth, so he sometimes will read her lines for us. And it's, it's comedy gold. <laughs> I'm not picky. <laughs> oh, gosh. When you screw it in, give it a hard manly twist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't top that. He's, he's so. a robot mechanic. Get your minds out of the gutter, people. <laughs> it's from Gurren Lagann. That's a real line in the show. A boy on the cusp of manhood can't spend the whole day whackering. <laughs> He's playing whack-a-mole, guys. Come on. <laughs> I, I can't even. <laughs> I'm trying to top that. I can't. I can't I still remember. don't know how we got that one on air. <laughs> I can't remember anything these days. <laughs> I don't know. I just can't. After 10,000 years, I'm free! Yeah. It's time to conquer Earth! <laughs> How are we? One more? Wow. One more? Okay. We're going to do one more question. I'm not picking. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel the stairs. Not exact. All right. How about way in the back? You're holding your phone up? Yeah, you. Hold the phone. <laughs> that's, that's funny, because now we all hold the phone. Always. He's referring to the uh, the R-rated outtakes. Some of them are 
quasi X-rated outtakes from the original Berserk dub, which I played guest on, and, and I also played every guy who dies. Because they said, you're good at screaming, play dead guys. I thought I was going to have a bigger part. This is a big part, you're just screaming. Um, so uh, there was, it was when Gut says, who wants to suck me off or, so, or something? Or did I say that? Did my character say that? I don't know how comfortable I feel at saying this in front of, yeah. although I don't think it affects your brains negatively, it's but you know, people nice get freaked out. So. Um, the night one. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I, there's other outtakes in Dragon Ball, for example, that are also very uh, R-rated. Um, that I can't repeat, and I'm hoping Funimation will really, there's, there's archives and archives of Dragon Ball outtakes that are all sitting in a vault at Funimation somewhere, and possibly on an engineer's hard drive who doesn't work there anymore, so they may discover the internet at some point, I don't know. <laughs> I hope so, because they're great, but I can't think of anything. But what, did you pick one, and then, wait, did you have one? Did, Barbara, did you, you had, Nothing we're like not, that was. I, I can't mention any of the outtakes, right? because most of them are really filthy. They're so what? filthy, I the, can't even think of a not dirty the, one. The one thing I can tell you, and it's not really an outtake, but uh, when I first started voicing Wolverine, the first time I went, because I'm very physical, I'll actually do the swipes. I farted. <laughs> and, I, and I covered it up the first time. I, I just, they didn't hear it in the booth. And I thought, oh, man, I better be professional. So I said, can I just do that again? Because I, you know, I think I can do it better. So I went and did it again. And then I realized later on that I was going to be playing Wolverine for a while. I realized that almost every time I would do the swipe, at least once during the session, I would fart. <laughs> <laughs> so now it, I just I do that proudly and and so if you listen very carefully if you're watching some of the Wolverine animated stuff or the video <laughs> games or whatever you're gonna hear and underneath you'll hear <laughs> is it really in there Steve if I listen carefully will I find it Ab it's absolutely in oh there. I'm I don't going know if to do that immediately up, when I get home but I, I proudly leave that in there. I'm yeah. absolutely well going to check that out. <laughs> For me, uh, Steven Universe records circa 2014 when I was going through puberty or a, <laughs> a hot mess. <laughs> like, you know, You're four takes of the same line. Like, you know. Hey, Pearl! <clears throat> hey, Pearl! <clears throat> hey, Pearl! <laughs> <laughs> like every line was like a sweat, a sweat fest for me back then, because uh. um, I, I had no control over my voice. So that that whole stretch for like a year and a half was was interesting. Now I have it more under control, and it still cracks, but it's it's a little rarer. Wow. I can't say it's what I've said. It's what people have said after I say, "Make my monster grow." <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I didn't. Did you guys see Dragon Ball Super Saturday Night? Did you see where Goku goes flick flick? I think I did one that goes fuck you as an outtake. I think there's one where I did that. I, I have to ask Sabbat, but I was telling my girl last night, I was like, Brie, I think I did one. And she goes, we got to find that and release it. And I go, I don't think I can do that. But I think when you did the flick, I, yeah. Anyway. Uh, uh, are we really out of time? I think we are. Well, I feel like we're just getting started. Yeah, I know. We're warming up. I, are you guys going back to your tables today? Or yeah. I, I think I'm going to go sign yeah. some more. Yeah, I'm going to go sign a little bit more, too. Okay, so we'll be back at our tables here shortly if you want to come see us there. Before we leave, though, thank you guys yes, so much thank for you. a warm you welcome rock. here. You're amazing. Wonderful hospitality of Lexington. Thank you. Oh, gosh. When you screw it in, give it a hard manly twist. <laughs> Well, I can't top that. He's, he's so. a robot mechanic. Get your minds out of the gutter, people. <laughs> That's from Gurren Lagann. That's a real line in the show. A boy on the cusp of manhood can't spend the whole day whackering. <laughs> he's playing whack-a-mole, guys. Come on. I, I can't even. <laughs> I'm trying to top that. I can't. I can't I remember. I still don't know how we got that one on air. I can't remember anything these days. <laughs> I don't know, I just can't. I don't care. After 10,000 years, I'm free! Yeah. It's time to conquer Earth! <laughs> How are we? One more? Wow. One more? Okay. We're gonna do one more question. I'm not picking. <laughs> I just feel the stairs. Not exactly. All right. How about way in the back? You're holding your phone up? Yeah, you. Hold the phone. That's, that's funny, because now we all hold the phone. Always. <laughs> He's referring to the, uh, the R-rated outtakes. Some of them are 
quasi-X-rated outtakes from the original Berserk dub, which I played Gaston in, and I also played every guy who dies. Because they said, you're good at screaming, play dead guys. I thought I was going to have a bigger part. This is a big part, you're just screaming. Um, so uh, there was, it was when Guts says, who wants to suck me off or, so, or something? Or did I say that? Did my character say that? I don't know how comfortable I feel that saying this in front of... Although I don't think it affects your brains negatively, but you know, people get freaked out. So, um, yeah, that I, I, there's other outtakes from Dragon Ball, for example, that are also very uh, R-rated um, that I can't repeat. And I'm hoping Funimation will. Really, there's there's archives and archives of Dragon Ball outtakes that are all sitting in a vault at Funimation somewhere, and possibly on an engineer's hard drive who doesn't work there anymore. So they may discover the internet at some point. I don't know. I hope so, because they're great, but I can't think of anything. But uh, did you pick one, and then, wait, did you have one? Did, Barbara, did you, you had, Nothing were it not, that was. I, I can't mention any of the outtakes. Right. Because most of them are really filthy. They're so well, filthy, I the, can't even think of a not dirty the, one. The one thing I can tell you, and it's not really an outtake, but uh, when I first started voicing Wolverine, the first time I went, because I'm very physical, I'll actually do the swipes, I farted. <laughs> and I. And I covered it up the first time. I, I just They didn't hear it in the booth. And I thought, oh, man, I better be professional. So I said, can I just do that again? Because I, you know, I think I can do it better. So I went and did it again. And then I realized. I love Stanley. Tom Kenny? Oh, Tom Kenny might do it. He might yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah. He's a champ. Yeah, we'll ask him. Yeah. I'll see him on Tuesday. I'll ask him. Okay, I'll tell him that you said so. What's your name? Kaden? Keenan. Keenan. Okay. I'll tell him Keenan says so. And I'm going to ask him on Wednesday. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and then he's, Zach's going to ask him on... No, I'm teasing. I'm serious. I'm going to write this down and I'm going to tell him Keenan said so. Absolutely. Man in the hat. Uh, uh, I got a question. Please. Yes. Uh, I was wondering if you could say a quote or any uh, Matrix or just to tell us real about this. <laughs> really? And you have to say shikshin. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually snicked, exactly. I only got to say that once in, well, in one character as uh, the sort of chibi version of Wolverine in, what was that? Superhero Squad. I actually said snicked. That was really weird. So, so now I'm dissing Origins? Wow. And, and what was the line you want? <laughs> hey, X-Men Origins, this is how I feel about you, bub. Snicked. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> this is just how I exist normally. <laughs> That's really good because that was like a different voice from your natural speaking voice. How did you do that? Oh. <laughs> Man, I've never. Wait a second, Steve. I just realized what you're doing. We're obviously older than Zach. You're doing voice actor hazing to the new guy. This is, right. we, we don't, I didn't know we had this. Wait, this is a new thing. That means I get to give you shit, Zach. I have not hazed you yet. You're the new guy. Does this mean I get to join the voice actor fraternity? That's right. We have to do something regarding involving your underwear or something pulled up or straight. I don't know. What do they do? I don't know anything about hazing. It's the voice actor spanking machine. Yes. <laughs> How do you think we get all those crazy fighting noises and pain, pain out? We're just going to record them. <laughs> yeah, there we go. His dad is making a hit list right now. Because I kept wondering, I'm like, this is the third Steve jab. Steve is the first Steve's one to go. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize you were hazing him. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've, well, I've actually known Peter for years. Uh, he used to work on Toonami back in the old days. Uh, he was one of the announcers for Toonami, so I'd see him passing in the hall, and I would kind of look at him and go, hi, hi, I'm doing, I'm doing Tom, and he was always very sweet, but I actually got to work with him on Transformers Prime, and uh, we worked together every week for a couple of years, so I got to know him really well. He and Frank Welker were Optimus and Megatron, and uh, we became really good friends. So on Rescue Bots, I think he only came... Under the situation where, you know, uh, you're, you've given a strong performance, you're making strong choices, and the director isn't strong enough himself, you're giving a strong choice that isn't the right choice, yeah. but it's so convincing, your director's new, and or maybe young or inexperienced or something, and they don't feel strong enough to go have their own vision and then argue with you and say, that's great, let's do this instead. Mm -hmm. I'll bet you've run into that a lot to where you hear your performance after the fact and like, I wish that guy had directed me more. Absolutely, you know? but... It's a curse to, be a, to make strong choices because you want to make strong choices all the time and if you're good at it, you can fool 
less Jedi-minded directors into thinking you're you're doing the right choice, and 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 you're just trying to make strong choices. Well, and yeah. even beyond that, in the in the editorial process, sometimes you'll do three, four, five, ten different takes, and you know that one of those is really, really good, and it's not the one that they choose yeah. and post. Yeah. And we have no control over that. We do what we do, and we have to let it go. So that that's very frustrating. Yeah, it's it's it is really frustrating sometimes when you know that there was a better one, and it mm -hmm. and it's not played. A yeah. lot of directors like, don't know how to talk to actors either. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to voice acting, Zach. Welcome. Hey, what makes me crazy is when I'm doing an accent and I know I'm not there. You know, I'm not on it, and they're saying, "Oh, it's fine, it's fine." Yeah, it's yeah, fine. that's and irritating. Like, no, no, because I, I did this. Um, uh, I don't know, a video game where I was Jamaican, and I was terrible. Dude, I want to hear it. <laughs> you terrible don't make a mon, mon, mon. You don't, uh, you know, it was like there's Spanish, it was Hindu, it was everything. It wasn't Jamaican. Well, Digimon was a whole thing that should have been Jamaican, right? <laughs> Digimon, Yaman. <laughs> Yaman. Yeah. Digimon. Irimon. No, Hello, I'm Irimon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First time I ever thought about that. I think uh, spending a lot of time with a character will really... Um, help get into it as well. I found that with Steven, especially. Um, spending all these years playing him has really opened up a lot more, um, because, especially because the writers on our show develop him as a character. He doesn't stay in one place. He's he's aged along with me, and I, I've i grown up at the same time as him, so it was a very interesting um, sort of parallel for, for him specifically and other characters that I've done you know multiple sessions for. It, it evolves over time. What a great show for that to be your breakout, too. Absolutely. It's such a brilliant show. and I'm... Super fortunate, man. I, yeah. I'm thankful for Rebecca every day. That's <laughs> she, it's amazing, brilliant. and you're you're incredible on the show, by the way. Thank you, thank you, man. Yeah, that means it. like <laughs> three worlds coming from you. <laughs> I'm letting other people pick. People are looking at me. I don't want to pick. Oh, the the lady with the braids and the whatever that is, <laughs> hair. <laughs> <laughs> wait, that I well that wait. What? <laughs> that I have worked in. That I. Oh. Paradox, Steven Universe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fans of lots of voice actors whose names I don't know. Then I meet them on the circuit. I'm like, oh my God, I love your work. I didn't even know. <laughs> you know so. That happens to me all the time. I love it. That's the best thing about conventions. We never get to see each other in town. That's true, we don't. And right. so we have to come here just to hang out. So we catch up. Most voice actors catch up at conventions. We don't see yeah. each other in LA. We're too busy yeah. doing stuff, you know? Yeah. It's so many of us work from home on a lot of our gigs that, you know, it's, it becomes very isolated. Not a lot of ensemble Spend workers. a lot of time in your underwear working at home, <laughs> yeah. recording. Well, I work in the studio in my underwear, too. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They let yeah. you do that now. They won't yeah. let me do that. I asked. I have your face on my underoos. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is funny. At a, at a con, I think it was this last year, uh, I was sitting next to you or a couple right. of stalls down from you, and somebody came up with that real about Goku oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. And I, I looked at it and I said, you know, that's the real Goku right down well, there. Well, that's very that, nice of you, but I, you're in that. That's but you, I though. Know, but, you know, I, I didn't even remember doing that. <laughs> it was so long ago, and, I, and somebody uh, sent me a link to it. To, to my performance in that, and I sucked. I was so bad. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I find that thought, hard to believe. You know what? I'm just gonna pass all of this back to the real Goku. Oh, that's, where, that's where it belongs. You're yeah, you'll always kind. be my thank Goku, you. dude. Oh, thank you. I was laughing man in Ghost in the Shell, so I had probably two lines. The Prime Minister. I don't know if she was in the movie. You know, the movie's coming out uh, yes. next week, right? Yes, next week. I have nothing to do with that, though. I have nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you have anything to do with the exploding gorilla? Or no, that was the King Kong movie. Then they had the the premiere, the the blow up King Kong caught on fire, like in in Vietnam or no, it was in the Manila. I can't remember what country it was in. It was in real. In real yeah, the, the premiere, the world premiere of the King Kong movie or whatever. The, there's a video of it on YouTube, caught on fire, and I'm like, that's a premiere. As long as nobody got hurt. I hope nobody got killed. I don't know if anyone got hurt actually, so I don't want to make a joke if several people are died. I would have, have loved dead. to do the voice of the burning Kong, though. Yeah. Be oh, put me out! Put me out! <laughs> That's actually the plan for the closing ceremonies for this here convention. 
What's they're, that? Uh, they're setting a giant gorilla on fire for this convention. Closing Are they? Ceremonies. Yeah. Are Cold. you suiting up for that? What's that? Are you suiting up for that? Yeah, it's fireproof yeah. and everything. I've been, I've been training for this for weeks. <laughs> I have a party weeks. in the desert with a burning gorilla. Um, <laughs> that sounds like a new festival. That's exactly. Go. Burning gorilla. Burning Kong. Burning Kong 2018. 2000, well, 17 now, but the next year it'll be, yeah, okay. The We're burning stepping back on the evolutionary ladder. <laughs> Right. We never really talk to each other. We just riff when we, we hang do. Out. We, we don't should, really. I don't even ask how Steve is. I just like we just riffing. No, I know no. nobody cares anyway. <laughs> do, you, do you guys have questions? Yeah. Really? Sorry. Do we have a system for this? We don't. Well, unless unless uh, uh, I forgot the gentleman's name was going to moderate it. But usually we just ran off, let ran somebody on the panel randomly point, and when I do it, I just try to. Script has a lot to do with oh, it. Writers. Oh, writers. Yeah. I love writers. Writers and directors, too. <laughs> yeah. And whatever the director lets you get away with or, or uh, you know, encourages in the booth, I think, is, is really, really helpful. It can change your performance completely. But I bet you've run into this, Steve. If you, have, if you don't have a – and I'm guessing you have Barbara. You haven't yet, Zach. No, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> um, I'm teasing. But you'll know what the I'm teasing about in a second. Begun. But I bet you've run into a situation where, you know uh, – you're, you've given a strong performance, you're making strong choices, and the director isn't strong enough himself. You're giving a strong choice that isn't the right choice, yeah. but it's so convincing, your director's new, and or maybe young or inexperienced or something, and they don't feel strong enough to go have their own vision and then argue with you and say, that's great, let's do this instead. Mm -hmm. I'll bet you've run into that a lot to where you hear your performance after the fact, and like, I wish that guy had directed me more. Absolutely. You know? but. It's a curse to be a, to make strong choices because you want to make strong choices all the time, and if you're good at it, you can fool less Jedi-minded directors into thinking you're you're doing the right choice, and 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 you're just trying to make strong choices. Well, and yeah. even beyond that, in the in the editorial process, sometimes you'll do three, four, five, ten different takes, and you know that one of those is really, really good, and it's not the one that they choose yeah. and post. Oh, and we have no control over that. We do what we do, and we have to let it go. So that that's very frustrating. Yeah, it's it's it is really frustrating sometimes when you know that there was a better one, and it. Mm -hmm. And it's not played. A yeah. lot of directors like don't know how to talk to actors either. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to voice acting, Zach. Welcome. Hey, what makes me crazy is when I'm doing an accent and I know I'm not there. You know, I'm not on it. And they're saying, oh, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's and irritating. Said, no, no, because I, I did this, um, uh, I don't know, a video game where I was Jamaican. And I was terrible. Dude, I want to hear it. <laughs> you know, make a mon, a mon, mon, mon. You don't, uh, you know, it was like it was Spanish, it was Hindu, it was everything. It was like a Jamaican. Well, Digimon was a whole thing that should have been Jamaican, right? <laughs> Digimon, Yaman. <laughs> Yaman. Yeah. Digimon. Irimon. No, Hello, I'm Irimon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First time I ever thought about that. I think uh, spending a lot of time with a character will really... Um, help get into it as well. I found that with Steven, especially. Um, spending all these years playing him has really opened up a lot more, um, because, especially because the writers on our show develop him as a character. He doesn't stay in one place. He's he's aged along with me, and I, I've i grown up at the same time as him, so it was a very interesting um, sort of parallel for, for him specifically, and other characters that I've done you know multiple sessions for. It, it evolves over time. What a great show for that to be your breakout, too. Absolutely. It's such a brilliant show, and... I'm Super fortunate, man. I, yeah. I'm thankful for Rebecca every day. That's <laughs> She's it's amazing, brilliant. and you're you're incredible on the show, by the way. Thank you, thank you, man. Yeah, that means uh, the idea was uh, Stephanie and only originally voiced that, and normally we voice. It's very often that women voice little boy characters. Uh, it sounds more correct, and it works better. Um, they had this idea that since Goku gets reincarnated uh, as a little boy again, that I would voice his thoughts because he would still be a 45 year old man that was shrunken down, or however old Goku was at the time which I thought was a good idea, but my producer at the time was kind of an idiot. And so, no, that's a dumb idea. Nobody's going to get that. I'm like, no, it makes perfect sense if you read the story. So, you know, I, I was disappointed that I wasn't uh, working on that. And I've never tried to voice the character like Stephanie has done. Um, so, yeah, it just, you know, no, I haven't. But I wish I had. <laughs> Is that Michael Rooker back there? <laughs> If he, he is, he'll start messing with us, because that guy will mess with you. He is so I funny. I know. He's a trip. He's well, awesome. This gentleman here has to just... <laughs> yes? Do it! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh... 
Oh, bad life choice. It's good to be a bad guy. No, I, I thought that was amazing. That whole arc was incredible. Uh, I might have back then. I, yeah, I, I had some bad habits back then. Could have been, yeah, could have been. I don't, I don't remember much from that time in my life. <laughs> no, 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 no. I wasn't, I wasn't smoking cigarettes at that time. Um, <laughs> no, it's funny that you mentioned Yamaki because most people talk about Gilman and other characters. That, that, that's a name I've not heard in a long, long time. So, thank you. Wait, Steve, are you the guy? Wait, are you the guy? Hang on, I might be a fan of Steve's voice before you pick the next person. Wait, are you the guy in Diablo who goes? <laughs> The guy was the he's one of the crypt guys or the in the Diablo. He's got this great cackly I'm the, laugh. I'm the head in the bag. I'm that guy. Yes, yeah. yes. That I'm a fan Sultan of. Sultan Cool. Yes. Awesome. And he's got that crazy laugh. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Sultan Cool, oh, yeah. yes. yes. Sorry, I didn't realize this that. Gentleman right here. Sorry. As long as he's alive. Oh, don't vote. Stanley keeps saying he's done with these things. Stan's really old, and he's Look, kind of I done with die at any yeah. second. No. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he'll come here anymore. He, I think he said he's done. Is he? Yeah. I know he's got a farewell good one going on at New York yeah. Comic Con, a farewell appearance. Tomorrow's headline is Sean Schemmel jinxes Stan's life. <laughs> <laughs> that everyone hates me. <laughs> I love Stanley. Tom Kenny? Oh, Tom Kenny might do it. He might yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah. He's a champ. Yeah, we'll ask him. Yeah. I'll see him on Tuesday. I'll ask him. Okay, I'll tell him that you said so. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> back and I'm walking in the parking lot trying not to laugh my ass off going, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the engineer. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't recognize him. It was in Texas, actually. It wasn't in L.A., but know, it was I weird. know some people, do you, I mean, I, I notice people do the hand over the ear when they work. It. You do the hand over the ear? Because I'm deaf. <laughs> no, when, especially when I'm doing uh, really nuanced, quiet characters or deep voice characters, and I, I really can't hear it unless I do that. And if you put your hand behind your ear there, it actually amplifies what's coming out. So it's, it's the equivalent of wearing headphones, which is where I began in anime. A lot of us began in anime. Uh, I got used to being able to hear myself, and without doing that, I can't hear myself as effectively. Oh, the hands are going. somebody from the middle here. The middle, yeah. That's all right. Uh, you right there. Yes. You. <laughs> I want to know what that guy did to you in voice acting. Like, was he like an Alex eating Cheetos? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yes. I was eating Cheetos. <laughs> you were at the house with us. <clears throat> That's a good question. Well, when I was a kid, um, I was fascinated with Rich Little and... Bill Cosby and uh, later Robin Williams, Eddie Murphy, anybody who could do voice, but in particular guys who imper impersonators, that's why people don't realize who Rich Little was. That guy, if you ever get a chance to see him ro on a roast with uh, Jimmy Stewart, teaching Jimmy Stewart how to do a Jimmy Stewart impression, it is comic gold. And, he, and Jimmy Stewart's doing, and he's like, and you lean forward, and then you do And he's doing the whole, and Jimmy Stewart's playing along with him in perfect stride. But I think the reason I, I liked it is because I was watch Rich Little and he'd be doing impersonations of people I had never heard of because I, I was born in the late 60s and I was growing up in the 70s and I didn't know who Jack Benny was or all these old school 30s and 40s actors, but he would transform into them. He would do a Jack Benny who I'd never seen before. I'm like, I don't know who this Jack Benny guy is, but he just became him. Like he just literally would transform vocally. It really felt to me like a different spirit was entering his body. And I was like, he's a different, I want to do that. And so I would, I would listen to Bill Cosby records over and over you know, to wrestle my brother whom I slept with. Bill Cosby's a very funny fellow, right? Oh, he's doing the what, the cubits, and he's doing the thing, and he would tell the story. I learned so much about storytelling and how to, you know, do, create, and it would also teach me, I even learned stuff from like Michael Winslow who would just do sound effects, even though I can't do those sound effects. It was just people who showed me that you could do more things with your voice than just talk. Um, then I was constantly, th from that I would turn the volume down on, on, on particularly black and white television shows and make up voices in real time all the time. I didn't know I was practicing my whole life. So then I went to music school and I was a French horn player in orchestras and stuff and my friend of mine was like, you should audition for this show, which was Dragon Ball Z, uh, which I didn't know what it was. And it, was, it wasn't announced as Dragon Ball Z, it was just said Nash wanted voice actors for a national cartoon. I said, nah, I don't want to do it, I'm a French horn player. But they're like, no, you should do it. <laughs> so that's, that's my answer. Any more questions? Yeah. yeah, pick. Picking a single character. Oh, I thought you did it. Sorry. Is, no, I don't do you. anything. I haven't done anything. I'm sitting here. Um, <laughs> I thought you said it. I'm sorry. <laughs> picking a favorite character, I think, is really hard when you've been doing this as long as some of us have. Um, 
<laughs> just because I, it, at least from my experience, they sort of become part of my personality and my personality becomes part of them. They, they're intertwined. And if you choose one, the rest of them fight in my head and I feel like it's going to explode in a red mist. So um, my, my typical answer for that question is whatever I'm working on Monday morning is my favorite because it means <laughs> I'm still employed in this business. <laughs> so, okay. How about, I'll let Steve pick. Yeah. They, they talked to me about that because uh, the idea was uh, Stephanie Nadolny originally voiced that. And normally we would voice, it's very often that women voice little boy characters. Uh, it sounds more correct and it works better. Um, they had this idea that since Goku gets reincarnated uh, as a little boy again, that I would voice his thoughts because he would still be a 45-year-old man that was shrunken down or however old Goku was at the time, which I thought was a good idea, but my producer at the time was kind of an idiot. And so, no, that's a dumb idea. Nobody's going to get that. I'm like, no, it makes perfect sense if you read the story. So, you know, I, I was disappointed that I wasn't uh, working on that. And I've never tried to voice the character like Stephanie has done. Um, so, yeah, it just, you know, no, I haven't. But I wish I had. <laughs> is Michael Rooker back there? <laughs> <laughs> if he, he is, left. he'll start messing with us because that guy will mess with you. He is so I funny. I know. He's a trip. He's but awesome. Yes. Do it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, bad life choice. It's good to be a bad guy. No, I, I thought that was amazing. That whole arc was incredible. Uh... I might have back then. I, yeah, I, I had some bad habits back then. Could have been, yeah, could have been. I don't, I don't remember much from that time in my life. <laughs> no, 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 no. I wasn't, I wasn't smoking cigarettes at that time. Um, <laughs> no, it's funny that you mentioned Yamaki because most people talk about Gilman and other characters. That, that, that's a name I've not heard in a long, long time. So, Thank you. Wait, Steve, are you the guy, wait, are you the guy, hang on, I might be a fan of Steve's voice before you pick the next person. Wait, are you the guy in Diablo who goes, <laughs> the guy was the, he's one of them crypt guys, or the little character live in me, so I got to be friends with it on some level, um, even if I hate myself. <laughs> I don't know, as the character, if the character hates himself. Um, it's, it's not really a character, but promo work is, is very strange. Um, <laughs> if you guys have ever watched, like, you know, a network broadcast, like, coming up next on Blah 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 Network, um, that kind of stuff, it's, you're literally not playing a character. It's, it's very, like, one note, you have to do, like, a bunch of takes of, you know, just changing the sound, but there's no, like, motivation behind it. It's literally just commercial. So, like, the, after the 17th time of saying, like, Coming up next at six, the land before time, 12, 13, 14, 15, just all the way through for an hour in your closet. It's like, it's maddening sometimes. You don't ever, I used to have to do those for, uh, for kids, and uh, at some point I'll tell you a story about how I actually lost my temper and cursed out my producer and left for the day because he was being <laughs> such a douche. But, um, which I do not recommend. That was completely unprofessional behavior, and I don't recommend it. However, I still relish it and enjoy it. Um, and I wrote a parody about him getting fired doing an impression of him and everyone at the office. I, I, I totally mocked him to death. But do you ever feel like when I was doing Sunday at 8, Thursday at 5, shove it up your ass. Like you're just shoving. At, here, watch our freaking show. And you just want to put a gun to your head. I have a, I couple, a couple recordings saved to my hard drive of me just like taking the promo scripts after I finish and just going through them and like swearing a bunch and doing yes, a bunch of different Yes, voices. you have to. And yes. I, I specifically label it like do not send this file. Come to the dark side. <laughs> but, but yeah, just a different voice for every line and it just, you know, blowing off steam. Yeah, more, m more so for me, it's like when you're doing a really sweet character, you <laughs> want to say things like, shove it up your ass. <laughs> you because it gets too saccharine, and you have to stick it where the sun don't shine. <laughs> Especially on panels in Lexington. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where we're not supposed to curse. Oh, we're not. Oh, wait, I forgot Probably about not. that. There are children in the room. Sorry. <laughs> oh, know. no, it might not affect I, your head. They have to learn sometime. It's okay. It's so okay. The, the only character, uh, like you were saying, I, the, the nastier the character, the more interesting it is for me because True. I don't get to do that in real life. 
So I have to find some sort of redeeming value or purpose in that character for being that nasty. And it helps me, I think, to understand people who kind of go in that direction. And yeah, that, sure. That it is possible to make that switch if enough things go wrong in your life. Yeah. Um, but the one character that I, I actually walked out on was in a show that they just called... Uh, was it hentai? No. Because <laughs> I did walk out of a hentai session. Yes. I couldn't do it. They but. just they called it Project X. And they told me that I was playing a creature. That's literally all they told me. Oh, so it was hentai. I was just joking. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, my God. Oh. And I walked into the booth, and, and I'm known for doing creature work. So I go in there, and I'm doing this creature, and this this big, gnarly thing with tentacles. And I didn't think anything of it, and I had never seen a hentai before. And, oh, you were and not just, a fr familiar with tentacle cock, No. You were and not. So, okay. So I went in there, and I'm just going, <laughs> doing this really <laughs> disgusting creature. Pretty much. I was eating Cheetos. You were at the house with us. <clears throat> well, when I was a kid, um, I was fascinated with Rich Little and Bill Cosby and uh, later Robin Williams, Eddie Murphy, anybody who could do voice, but in particular guys who imper impersonators. That's why people don't realize who Rich Little was. That guy, if you ever get a chance to see him on a roast with uh, Jimmy Stewart, teaching Jimmy Stewart how to do a Jimmy Stewart impression. It is comic gold. And, he, and Jimmy Stewart's not, and he's like, and you lean forward, and then you do And he's doing the whole, and Jimmy Stewart's playing along with him in perfect stride. But I think the reason I, I liked it is because I was watching Rich Little, and he'd be doing impersonations of people I had never heard of, because I, I was born in the late 60s, and I was growing up in the 70s. And I didn't know who Jack Benny was or all these old school 30s and 40s actors, but he would transform into them. He would do a Jack Benny who I'd never seen before. I'm like, I don't know who this Jack Benny guy is, but he just became him. Like he just literally would transform vocally. It really felt to me like a different spirit was entering his body. And I was like, he's a different, I want to do that. And so I would, I would listen to Bill Cosby records over and over, you know, to wrestle my brother who I slept with. Bill Cosby is a very funny fellow, right? Oh, he's doing the what, the cubits, and he's doing the thing. And he would tell the story. I learned so much about about storytelling and how to you know do create and it would also teach me I even learned stuff from like Michael Winslow who would just do sound effects even though I can't do those sound effects it was just people who showed me that you could do more things with your voice than just talk um, then I was constantly from that I would turn the volume down on, on, on particularly black and white television shows and make up voices in real time all the time I didn't know I was practicing my whole life so then I went to music school and I was a French horn player in orchestras and stuff and my friend of mine was like you should audition for this show which was Dragon Ball Z which I didn't know what it was, and it, was, it wasn't announced as Dragon Ball Z, it was just said Nash wanted voice actors for a national cartoon. I said, nah, I don't want to do it, I'm a French horn player. But they were like, no, you should do it, you're good at voices, you do them all the time, you're doing it at parties, it's fun, you're doing it all the time. Now granted, I didn't realize I was practicing the whole time to get that. And I'd taken a couple of acting classes in college, so I had some acting experience. And then I went in for the audition and got three parts, and I was like, I didn't even get it, and I didn't even know what Goku was. And then, then I got in the booth the next day, and I was like, I've been, I feel like I came home. It was just really weird. It just it happened, and then I've been doing it ever since, and I'll keep doing it until they stop hiring me or I hate it. <laughs> One or the other. And the way the industry's now, as you know, I'm starting to hate it. But no, I mean, not the act of acting or voice acting, but just we have our, our, our video game strike going on and stuff, and other things that are kind of a problem for us as actors right now. And I, I don't want to darken the room, but that's my answer. Um, anyway, sorry, go ahead. Um, for me, I started as an on-camera actor. I, that's what I moved to Los Angeles for, and I, I still do that. But um, 